In this series, we will study the aircraft longitudinal stability. And the first lecture of this series is on the importance of CG location and the definition of neutral point. We've seen this aircraft before. It's a side view and the CG is indicated by the uh, red dot. And the flow scenario is the aircraft now is on the upward gust. And this will cause uh, angle of attack increase at the tail plane and especially on the elevator so we get a lift and this lift will produce a restoring moment around the CG and we have MT equals minus LT LT and remember this negative sign because this moment is pointing towards a negative direction of Y axis so we call it restoring moment that's why I get a negative sign okay and now let's consider what happens if the CG moves. And if we have a forward CG and we have an after CG, and apparently the forward CG has longer LT than the after CG. And if we um, compare the forward CG and the after CG in this kind of plot, the X axis is uh, angle of attack and the Y axis is uh, restoring moment. And now let's see if we have the, the the two CG locations. If there are two CG locations and they have the same angle of attack, what happens? The after CG will produce a smaller restoring moment in magnitude, and the forward CG will produce a larger restoring moment in magnitude. And this is because the moment arm are different. Right, and if we are now for this two CG location, we are increasing the angle of attack. We're moving along the x-axis, and what happens? And it will be like this. They will follow different tracks. Why? Because they have different moment arm. The forward CG has a longer moment arm, so the slope, the curve slope, is steeper. Then the after CG, which has a smaller, shorter moment arm. So it increases uh, less fast than the forward CG. Okay, so now we can see if you have a forward CG, uh, the restoring moment will increase faster than the after CG. And so now what happens is if we move the CG successfully or continuously afterward, backward, and there should be a virtual point. There should be a point. Um, the curve, MT alpha curve, is horizontal. The slope is zero. And in that case, what happens to the elevator? The elevator is functionless. So it won't produce any changing um, restoring moment. So what for now, if the CG is at, up, at that moment, there is a gust, upward gust. The, since there is no restoring moment change, the pilot need to continuously adjust the stick elevator angle. So it's, it's essentially not self-stabilizing the aircraft. Okay, so you see roughly now the importance of CG, right? And also we introduced one critical uh, condition when MT alpha becomes horizontal. Okay, so let's analyze further in the next slide. Now we should be able to define the neutral point. So the neutral point is actually the CG point when the aircraft is only neutrally stable and the tail plane fails to act as a stabilizing device and in this case the pilot needs to constantly correct the elevator angle okay so now let's see how can we determine the neutral point where it is and we've seen this uh, plot just now now we are adding an extra line the green line and each um, red green and blue lines correspond to a different CG location and moving from forward to afterwards Okay, and 
we can see they are following each lines are roughly a straight line and in real case it's uh, um, roughly a straight line and we are showing in straight line here okay so now if we are converting this plot into a CG position versus partial empty partial alpha the gradient the gradient of restoring moment with respect to the angle of attack okay so for three CG locations they have different slopes or rate changing rate of restoring moment and the red curve has the largest in magnitude although they are all in negative but in magnitude absolute value and the green is intermediate and the blue is the smallest because the CG is moving further upward and now if we connect these three lines and just there will be a cross point between this dashed line with respect uh, and there will be an intersection point between the dashed line and the x-axis and or the CG position uh, axis and we call this point is a neutral point and we can see at neutral point the slope of the curves is zero so this cross point is uh, actually the neutral point at neutral point the gradient of partial empty partial alpha is zero so this is actually the definition of neutral point and neutral point is uh, normally at 40 uh, 54 percent of the mean air dynamic chord so that's the definition of neutral point now we we can see how to determine a neutral point and in practice there is a forward limit of the cg and after limit of each cg and if it's the cg accidentally is beyond the forward limit the handling will be very sluggish the aircraft is very stable is that right because the moment of arm is very large and if there is a slight disturbance it will be very quickly returning to an uh, or a uh, stable condition but this is advantage but during um, taking off and if you want to do any maneuver like climbing and descending that's very hard to control so we call it sluggish handling but if the CG on the other hand is very close to the neutral point which means uh, elevator will be be less provide less function stabilizing the uh, aircraft or producing the restoring moment and then in this case the aircraft will be successfully control the stick to produce the uh, restoring moment so that's uh, what happens for the after CG location finally we will define the static margin what is static margin and we've seen this uh, aerofoil if we um, simplify an tube wing type aircraft into this uh, aerofoil and we have uh, different sections indicating the percentage of mean aerodynamic cord the MAC is mean aerodynamic cord so we have a quarter and a 50 percent and now let's overlap the CG and the neutral point the actual CG is indicated by the green dot and the neutral point is indicated by the orange rectangle okay so the static margin is actually the distance between CG and the neutral point and normally it's no less than 77 percent of the mean aerodynamic cord so it should should have substantial distance and we should know why and the CG shouldn't be very close to the neutral point right and in the previous slide we indicated that there's a forward limit and a backward limit and so the typical range of CG is from 15 percent of the mean aerodynamic cord towards uh, 43% 40, of the mean aerodynamic code and also we, we know why the CG can't be too much forward and uh, too much backward so we've described and that's why the CG is important okay so far 
we should be able to understand why, in practice, the aircraft CG should be calculated before takeoff. Is that right? And this is uh, actual practice people, the engineers do, technicians do before any aircraft takeoff. And also maybe you experience if they if you're flying, the aircraft is empty, you are usually not allowed to move to choose a random seat because it's uh, based on the actual calculation of the CG. And if you move substantially and the CG might change and that would cause disaster.